and welcome. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to do a basic wash using a wet and wet technique. So we're going to be looking at some sky today, plus some other bits and pieces as well. You'll notice that the watercolour pad that I'm using, or the watercolour sheet that I'm using, I've taped down with masking tape around the sides. And we do that just because it tightens the paper. So when the paper gets wet, it will want to shrivel up. So just masking it out to the corners just keeps it in place. You'll see that. Okay, let's get cracking. Right then, here we go. So we're gonna do a wet on wet. And what that is, is where we're gonna really get the paper nice and wet. And we're gonna get the color just to slow down. I'm gonna use my flathead brush and I'm going to put loads and loads of water but before I do I'm just going to mix just a bit of colour. So what I'm looking to do on this side is I want just a general blue sky. Okay, Nothing more complicated so what I'm going to do is just put loads of water in my pot, get it ready. I'm starting off with a, an ultramarine blue, it's a lovely blue this one. I just need to get it all nice and blued up, put it water Keep it going in there. I'm going to add just a little bit of just a little bit of this just into the mix just to kind of tone it down just a little bit. Okay, a bit more blue. But to be honest, I don't really mind what I do with the colour here because it's just an example. Okay, once I've done that, I'm just going to wash my brush out. Now I'm going to go over the page. Now, what I'm going to do, you can see a bit of blue on there already, but that's fine. We want blue. And what's gonna happen, I'm literally just covering the page. Right, so that's all nice and wet. Okay, back to my blue. Get it really, oh, lovely, 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 lovely. So, let's go for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm literally just gonna wash it across the page like that. And you can see, it's just bleeding in quite nicely. Now, as you go down the page, I want to, to add a bit more in there. This gets more in there, yeah, that's lovely. Just let it, let it do its thing. Okay, as we come down the page, you see it's getting lighter. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow, just into one side, just as it's lighting up. But because water, the nature of what it is, uh, lightens up, the more water you have in, you can see that it's, it's really just starting to lighten up, as if it's going into the horizon. Now, I'm gonna dry the brush out. Yeah, so dry brush out with a bit of tissue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add, I'm actually gonna take the water out. Now what that is actually doing is adding some wispy cloud. That's all it is, it's just taking it out. I'm just gonna take it a little bit higher as well. It's, it's, I'm, it's literally, I'm just removing the paint. And you can see, just adds a little bit more of a kind of a cloud effect into the sky by doing that. Okay, now that is a basic wash. That's called wet on wet technique. You can see as the as the waters drip down and and it gets lighter down to the horizon. All right, that's as simple as it is for watercolor washes like that. If something like this, obviously, it's just a very blank blank sky with a little bit of bit of puffy cloud in there for the moment. And what I'm going to do down here, I've got the horizon. I'm just going to tidy the horizon up a little bit. Now, when you have a dry brush, if you dry your brush out, it will all automatically sap up any ex excess water on there. So down here, I'm just going to give it a bit of contrast, a bit of perspective, and I'm going to put some greenery as if it's the land coming forward. So let's find a bit. Of... Okay. Now, you may be surprised to hear, or maybe not, that I am actually colorblind. I am what they class as green deficient. Now, it's something I was born with, and that's something I can't do much about, but it's never stopped me from painting. And I, I want to put it out there that many famous artists were colorblind. Picasso, Monet were reportedly colorblind. Um, never stopped them, did it? Never stopped them at all. 
So all I'm doing here is just adding another wash now to my landscape. And it's going to bleed in a little bit, but that's fine. I want it to bleed in. That's, that's what I want it to do. So I've wet the brush, just going to take it across, just going to add the color now. So obviously a little bit of green. Now you can mix these colors, obviously green and yellows. I'm just going to put a little yellow in there. Just thinking about middle distance. When you go to middle distance, it tends to be slightly bluer color. So you'll see what I mean on here. So I'm just going to just drag it across. Just drag, 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 drag. So I'm not actually that fussed about how it comes out there. But as you can see, that's all it, all it is. And that's just setting up the scene. Now, another little technique, because that's wet, I'm just going to scroll with my, just a, just the rigger brush. Now, I talked about the rigger brush in the equipment um, video. I'm just going to use the back end of the rigger brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just weave my way. The page is still wet. Okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark. And what that's actually doing is that's taking the excess water away. I'm just going to do another one. So what this looks like, get it right, it's just a road or something going on in the distance. All right, that's all I'm going to do. I don't know if you can see that on the picture that well. And that's literally just taking the excess water away. All right. Now, once that's in, I'm just going to let that dry for a minute. Notice I'm still using the first flathead brush, which I started with. And this is the one I started with. Let's just go for some colors. Let's just get them all in just to give it a bit more depth. Right. That's what I want. That's perfect. Okay, now the page is still a little bit damp, but that's fine. But I want to move in the direction that I want the flow of the paint to go. Okay, so just a bit more water into it. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's gone over the, the marked road edge bit at the moment, it really doesn't. It's all part of watercolor. Let it, look at that drop down and that is the wet on wet technique okay so this is this is kind of land this is fields however we want it it doesn't matter what it is really at the moment it's just experiment with it so on this side of the page i'm going to do a stormy sky okay so for a stormy sky obviously we're not looking at the blue so much we're looking at the really darker the darker colors now so with this i'm going to use my ultramarine blue which i had here Still going to start off with that as a base color, but I'm going to mix it with this color here. Okay, it's just a mix here of kind of a, an ochre color which I have. And here, look at that color. Oh, that's good. Right. Now, I want to give the effect of rain clouds on here. So, before I do anything else, I need to wet the paper. We're talking wet on wet, as we said before. So I need to wet that. Now, think about the direction of the rain, okay? So I want your brush to be a little bit more liberal here. And not we don't have to go across. I want it to go all over the shop, all right? Plenty of water on there. So, plenty of water. Really just rough it in. Okay, I don't care where it's going. And, and actually what you're gonna naturally get is the effect, hopefully, of rain. So, I've got my water on there. Now, I'm just, just dabbing it away, but you can see straight away, look at that, look at that, it's beautiful. All right, that's beautiful color coming down there. And that is rain. That is the color I'm looking for. Let's get a bit darker up here. Just gonna add a little bit of different color. It doesn't matter what color actually, to be honest. It's got movement in it. Okay, that's it. I'm just gonna bring it down. 
Right, now what you will notice straight away here, I'm just going to use a dry brush. What I'm going to do is just take off that. In fact, do you know what? I'm just going to extend, extend the horizon. I'm just going to use a bit of tissue just to take it away. finished yet. I'm going to put more on there. I'm just going to add a bit more into here. A bit more blue in there. Just really going to give it, oh yeah, look at that. Just really kind of let it drip down. Right, and as it goes down to the horizon, just turn the brush, just turn it in the side like that. Just adding a little bit more. Yes, that's it. Right. What I did before is I dried my brush and I'm just going to add a little bit more broken cloud into it as well. So, just to add a bit more definition. And, you know, I'm just feeling my way around it really. I'm not, I'm not actually too fussed about the detail here of what it is doing given that sense of movement. Alright, just gonna add that right. and as I said I'm not too worried about the drips down here. I am just gonna clean it up to give myself a horizon line. Then again, I'm just going to put some land into here. Now, obviously, the cloud is dictating slightly, or the weather is dictating slightly what's going on. So I'm just going to change the color slightly. I'm going to keep <clears throat> keep the color that I have for the sky into the into the green of the land down here. So I'm going to use the same color. I'm going to add just a bit. Look at this lovely green here. Right, it does seem very, very bright, but actually tone it down. Now what I'm not going to do here is do wet on wet. I'm just going to do dry. So just dry paint, just paper. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just going to drain through. So, but I'm going to start. Now it gives you more control, obviously when it's not wet on wet. But it's nice, it's, the horizon's there, it's a bit of middle distance, but you can see that we have a lot more movement going on with the weather and the rain. So let's just quickly go back to this. Let's see what we got going on. I'm just gonna add a bit more detail into this painting now. Again, I'm gonna go slightly drier. I want these fields to be a little bit brighter. So back to my green here. Now this time I'm gonna emphasize this road layouts. Again, I'm still using the same brush. Same for the other side, so we'll just line it up there. Doesn't matter, it could be hills, could be fine. Okay, and there you go. We have more definition now. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue, just a little, not a lot, just into the top parts of these because this is middle distance and you find the blue makes it look a little bit more hazy, makes the distance look a little bit duller or more distant as we want it to be. Don't be afraid of using blue quite a lot in watercolors. It's a very good color to use. It may seem a little quite heavy there, but we can always tone it down. Just take it off. If, if you put too much paint on, 
just put a dry brush and then the dry brush will soak up any excess paint straight away there you go there you go look at that that's what I want and the beauty of watercolor is is you can't be exact with it you really can't I'm just gonna dry that off there just take that excess water you can see it just disappearing straight away there you go so it's given me definition it's given me a road it's given me some detail to that fantastic okay I'm just gonna just add a bit more wind I'm just gonna dry it up a little bit more it doesn't matter it just shows movement there's you know you can you could get away with so much with watercolor it's such an expressive medium okay right back to my my other side that's still drying off so I'm just gonna do the same again let's add a little bit more horizon but this time I'm actually gonna just gonna add I don't know a little bit more detail to the hillside let me just put a pair of hill in the first place let's do that it is still a bit wet but that's fine because it looks like that the ray is raining in the distance so that's fine we can get away with that Just bring it down there. Now it's very easy to start fiddling with things when you sh when you you know when you shouldn't be. So sometimes just let it rest. Sit back, have a look at it from a distance. What's it look like from a distance? Is it working for you so far? Okay. Okay. So back to this one again. I'm just going to add a bit more green lighter green put a bit of yellow in there as well just to kind of emphasize the sunnier day we have here and again i'm not too fussed about the bleed of, of where everything is it just adds a bit more color to it i'm going to put a bit, bit, bit of detail into this in a minute but just for the time being i just want to add a bit more green that's nice i'm happy with that okay i'm not too fussed about what's going on in the distance because it, it looks like if you can see it um, my, when it was wet earlier, it looks like it's distant trees, which is great. So that's that's perfect. Right. So over to this one. I'm just going to add a little bit of a lighter colour. Again, we've got this misty, murky kind of rain going on in the background. At the foreground, I'm just going to add a bit more because, again, what I'm going to do very shortly is add a little bit more detail to this. Now, you may think, oh, he's just chucking paint on left, right, and centre. Well, yeah. Yeah, I am. It's <laughs> pretty much what I am doing. It's about fill. You really got to fill your way around your picture. Um, let the brush do the work, and you will have noticed I'm only using this flathead at the moment, apart from the the tip of the rigger. I'm really liking this. This is good. Okay. So I've got my basis of what I want to do with a wash. Um, now I'm going to add just a little bit of detail. Now this is only a sketch, just to give you a demonstration of, of how to work with wet on wet. But we do need a bit of perspective and just a bit of contrast as well. So I'm going to work on the left hand side picture first. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to just add a bit of foliage, just to add a bit of uh, dimension to the picture. Okay, so I'm just going to Mix a few colours here. So you go for the colours that you really fancy having a go at, really. And there's no rules. As I said, I'm colour blind, so uh, I can get away with it. I'm sure you can. I'm going to mix one of the colours I've got here already, just adding a little bit of uh, kind of a yellowy... Turn it into a green. Nice little green, that. And that's just going to give me just a little basis, just to get some, some trees. Now, we're going to talk about trees in, in another episode, and trees and foliage. But I'm just going to fill it really. So what I'm going to do here is just going to make some lines. Just I'm just using a thinner brush. Okay, just adding just a little bit of detail, just a bit of wispiness. And then you can just see, just let's get a bit darker. Let's get a bit dark into that. So, that's what I want. 
just adding just a bit of dynamics. There you go. Just feel it. I mean, you're never going to be able to replicate trees and bushes exactly with watercolour. But what you can do, don't worry, it's going into the road. We'll talk about that in a minute. I'm just going to add a bit around the corner, just on the side of the road. And also, I'm just going to add a few lines in, just some field lines, some fences, maybe some fence in there. Um, just to show a bit of depth. Again, I'm going from imagination here. I'm not... There's no rules. I will be darkening this area up shortly. And same with this side as well. So I'm just gonna go with a slightly drier brush. Put trees, shrubbery, just, just let it, yeah, just let, just let the brush do the work here. Ah, so that's nice, nice dark colors in there. You get a nice contrast there between the, the bright sky and the dark colours. And I'm just going to put uh, a little bit of a lighter yellow in there as well. Just, just I'm going to just take my different brush on here. There, let's use my Riga brush on here. Go straight in with the yellow. Now I'm just going to add inflections in there. Here you go. That's, that's what I want. So the con contrast between the dark and light. That's it. Right. And the beauty of the rigger brush, which is what we'll talk about in future episodes, is you can get those nice, clean, crisp lines in there as well. So add a bit more onto the other side because we've just done that. I make this side a little bit darker actually. Just let it. Yeah, that's it. Just with the foliage, just get it out there. What I'm going to do is I'm also just going to add just a little bit wispy. Here we go. So this is the the foreground. Is it nice and dark? That's good. Yes. Maybe just getting into the sky as well. Just that's. That's it, and it just adds a bit of tone into the sky as well. Excellent. Now, what I am actually going to do is, I'm gonna, instead of having a road, I'm going to turn this into a, a river, a stream. Just adding a little bit more here. So, for this, let's take my same brush, add a bit of that blue, got a nice blue sky. Let's start a new, new pot for this. Blue, maybe hint of that green we just used there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of weave my way down. Now this will lighten up, but I'm just I'm not covering all the space. I want some of the light to shine through because that is you know the sun shining, sun gleaming through. Again, this is only a sketch. This is only uh, giving you just a, an idea of how you might be able to work yourself. Now, while it's wet, I'm going to add some shadow. It's my favourite, this is. So we've got a shadow down here of this area here. In fact, I'm going to just darken it up even more because I think I kind of like it. That contrast there is going to be slightly darker. Let's just, just gonna go wispy a bit higher, that's it. that's it. And then because of that, we're just gonna go into the, the river here. Just adding a little bit of shadow. Let's just add a bit more in here. Again, no rules, you just do what you feel works for you. Okay. A bit more into that. Excellent, now I'm, I'm happy with that for the moment, for this sketch. I'm just going to quickly go over to here. I'm not going to touch this too much more because I just want to literally put some detail in the, in the, in the foreground here. 
Again, we're doing the same kind of thing. So I'm just going to use my smaller brush here. And I'm just going to literally just add some color. I'm not going to be as precise as the other one. I just want to add a bit of color to this bottom part. We'll see what I mean in a minute, how this works. Oh, dropped it on that. That's fine. That's fine. So again, it's just contrasting against that sky. All I'm doing is just letting the brush do the work, really. Just adding up in one. Now I'm going to just darken up the front bit here as well. So I'm going to just add a bit of ultramarine blue in there as well. Really nice dark bit of green. There you go, that's what I want. So just darken up that colour area. And that gives that kind of contrast on some of these wispy bits of grass or shrubland or whatever you want it to be. But I'm still doing wet on wet because the paint's still wet from before. But because of that, it really does mould in quite nicely. I'm going to just do one big shoot as if it's a, kind of a tree sticking out there somewhere. Sit another one there. Okay, as I say, we're going to talk about trees in another episode. It's literally just for a bit of perspective with our sky. Now I could spend hours pottering, but I'm not going to. But what I am going to do is just going to finish off with a bit of a trademark that I like doing, and that is my little birds. So just going to get a little dark colour because we want the silhouette of a bird. And what I'm going to do, and we'll talk about birds, is just a little tick. It's just a little tick. A little tick. That's all it is, just a little tick. Just in the distance. There you go. Just put it in the corner there. Just going to do one or two here, not many. Cool. Just around the tree. There you go. Just adding little dots. Now, from distance, that gives it movement, okay, and that's really important. Okay. And a bit more detail, just adding a little bit. Sorry, stop fiddling. Mustn't fiddle. Mass and fiddle. Just gonna, and what I'll do is just gonna add. Sorry, one thing. Just gonna add. Maybe a few little fence posts, just dotted, dotted along there. I'm just gonna fiddling. I'm just gonna dry it off. There you go. And just dry it off. Dab it with it. If it if it gets to the point where you've done something you didn't want to, just dab it off. Start again. And there, you have it wet on wet techniques just experiment with it you'll be surprised what you can do just stop it stop it I must stop this but anyway gives you the idea just let the pen let the brush work great if you like the video if you want to subscribe to the channel that'd be fantastic really appreciate that and I look forward to seeing you on the next video